All right, hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and demo my uh, digital rig here. Uh, so let me just go ahead and talk real quick about the different pieces of equipment that I have here. Over here is sort of the heart of the digital capture, which is basically the next evolution of an overhead projector. I have a camera, I have uh, a, a, a camera stand here or, or a camera arm. I have a tra LED tracing tablet. I can change the brightness of it, and I can throw liquids right underneath it. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this is that as I put the liquids under it, I can kind of zoom in and zoom out on whatever piece of artwork I like. This is something that's, you know, with like an overhead projector, kind of tough because you don't really have this level of control over it. Uh, and as we'll see in a second too, since I'm running this, uh, feeding this into a computer, I can also uh, add effects to it live and change the colors and all kinds of stuff, add video feedback to it, etc. Uh, over here is a similar thing, but this is sort of like a Frankenstein version of this. I actually have this on a Lazy Susan, and it's, and it's the same thing where I have a camera here and I got the light table, but in this case, so I can switch between two different things, I have it on this copy stand. So, for instance, let's just say over here, if I want to go to uh, this, my liquids down here. Let me put, let me get that going. So, for instance, over here, I can start adding liquids to it. And I also have a fan on it that's blowing the liquids around. And it's one of the things that I like to do a lot with my equipment is that I like to have sort of automated things. Because again, I work alone, so it helps to have stuff automated. So doing something like having uh, a fan on it really allows me to free up my, you know, free up myself and then work with other things. Um, and as I mentioned, this thing spins around and what I have here is sort of this, uh, it's, a, it's a turntable that's on a speed control. I can change the direction of it. Uh, this was given or lent to me by my friend Joshua White who made this. Um, and some of these things that we like to put on here would be like these shiny reflective things. Um, and also I have a bunch of lights here that I can put on it. And I also have a top light as well. And, you know, it all does different things depending on what you, you know, what you want to show and what you want to do with it. There you get the, I usually like to use manual focus with my stuff. You know, and then you can like sort of blend it. The other piece of equipment that I have here is a video mixer. Uh, this is, this is the Roland VO2. I will be honest and say I'm not really that happy with it. Um, because this one, I like the one that has the four inputs. This one just isn't as great. It's a great video mixer uh, for just getting stuff together, but it's not really great as a performance tool. Um, but now that I have these two cameras and the video mixer, I can start blending the artwork together. All right, and so and again, like I said, I can move this, you know, around and I can mix if I want to. I can mix together th those oils over here. And I can mix them with what I'm doing by hand and have all oils. Or if I want to, I can also, you know, or if I want to, I can also just uh, start adding some effects to it. Really quick, something I wanted to show off about this thing that I love. This thing here, also just putting this piece of glass over it, creates a really cool effect where by moving it up, the light gets distorted as it hits the, the lens here. So you can see I'm doing these really crazy like you know, warp effects and stuff like that. So that's some something that I do. 
Now, the other thing about all of this is that my signal flow, my signal flow in this case is actually this right here is being ran to a capture box and then ran into my Resolume. Uh, typically, I actually don't like to rely on the computer as the final output because as we know, computers tend to glitch out and be weird. So a lot of times I'll have one camera just on the video mixer and then the computer going into it and maybe another camera captured into the computer. This time here, just because for the purposes of the demo, uh, I changed it up because we're using the video capture um, cards to go into the computer here. And I know that people oft often ask about video capture. If you look at the Magwell, the Magwell HDMI card, which is this little bad boy right here, this I find, it's a little expensive, it's about $300, but I know that people um, often ask this question and stuff like the black magic intensity and all that, which is a popular one, I hate it, and if you ever worked with it, you know how finicky it is. That thing is like magical. It has a, there's no drivers to be installed. It right away just picks up any resolution that you want and goes. And so finally, let me just go ahead, since I have a computer here, I am running stuff into my computer. And what this does for me is allow me to do backups or sort of have automated stuff that I can do in case, let's say some of the analog stuff messes up and I'm running into trouble. I have a bunch of video clips going here. And so the program's Resolume, it's you know, pretty popular and I'm sure a lot of folks have heard of it. Uh, and I can, what I can do is I can start adding video clips to it that I have pre-recorded. Usually all my clips are stuff that I've done myself that's you know, artwork that I've created. I usually don't rely on like a lot of you know, computer effects. So while you know, I am doing pre-recorded clips and all that, I still like to make sure that there's the liquids and the organic elements of it. And as you know, with this program, Resolume, uh, you can do some pretty cool things with it, like start changing the colors. You know, you can add some feedback effects to it and, and all that stuff. And it's really, uh, it's really a lot of fun. All right, uh, up next, we're gonna talk about uh, the visual presenter and how uh, liquids can be integrated with analog video. So over here I have the Elmo EV500AF. As I mentioned in my talk, this is the one from the OJ trial. And so what it is, again, it's just a, basically a light table, a camera, and, you know, and it gets picked up. Um, we'll worry about this for a second. I'll explain the rest of the equipment where it's running into. But one of the really cool things about this is that this, this particular model of all the visual presenters I've ever seen is a digital and analog hybrid. While the camera itself is a CCD camera, the circuitry up here turns into analog and then feeds out um, via an analog signal path the whole way through. What it really has, which is really awesome, it has all these color changing features up here. And it also has stuff like you can zoom in, you can zoom out. It's got a positive and negative effect on it. So if you want to see it over here on the camera, I mean on the, uh, on the TV screen, you know, so we can do like a positive and negative effect on it. And this stuff makes it extremely useful and playable as far as a visual instrument goes. And, you know, so again, you're not limited to just doing like liquids on an overhead projector. You can actually play this thing. You can play, you can, you know, strobe the color in time or something or you can do some effects by maybe slapping the positive and negative real quick, or you can spin the plate and like move it in and move it out, et cetera. Uh, the, the head here also twists as well, which <coughs> we'll show in a second works well for another use of this device here. Um, but what I have going on here is I have this going into um, a V4, which a lot of people, you know, I'm sure are familiar with. It's a very common, uh, VJ, uh, old school VJ uh, tool. And going into it, you can put all different kinds of inputs. So for instance, I have like uh, a Radio Shack Archer set up in a feedback loop. You know, or I have an LZX video that I might want to add to it.
or I also have here, and it's a miracle of work today, I have this modified Nintendo that I made a couple years ago. And let's see if we can get it. Yeah, so what I ended up doing here is I went into the video chip here of this thing. This is actually uh, an old enough technology where the video chips are the big rectangular ones. Uh, and I believe there's 16 pins on each side. So this patch bay that I created just ran each of the wires, each of these, um, you know, each of these uh, uh, things over here down to each one of those pins. And sometimes I have it going across, uh, you know, some pots or other things that can control the voltage that's going through it. And I just wanted to show that off today. I got Mario actually going here now. And actually, like I said, it, it's finicky. It hasn't worked in a while, but I turned it on and it magically worked today. And so basically, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm glitching the thing out by doing, uh, you know, by, by, by patching different parts of the video chip uh, to itself. And, you know, and then I can basically just go ahead and do my artwork and combine it and combine liquids with all different kinds of things. There's also different blend modes on here, different types of keying that you can do. So it's a very effective way to do visuals. It's also a lot of fun, um, you know, doing, doing stuff with this type of, uh, you know, setup to me is in many ways more fun than doing it digitally because it's very hands-on. And just one thing I want to show real quick about this is that the Elmo also can, is really good for video feedback. So let me just take this off for a second. And what you can do is you can take a fly panel and you can run that fly panel, you know, hook it up to your V4 or whatever your video mixer and this becomes a really, really great way to do video feedback. And again, because of this device, because it has all these physical color changing knobs and all that, it's really cool and really fun. And you know, you can start adding different effects to it. And it's really, really neat. Um, for the longest time, my show was basically this plus another visual presenter. So I would run one with liquids. I would one, run another one with uh, feedback and then have other stuff going on with it. Um, but yeah, so that is the analog setup that I was working on. All right, and now I'm going to do a full on old school analog setup. I got three overhead projectors and on these I'm going to do three different types of liquids and then I'm also going to add a couple of color wheels uh, and stuff like that to it. So right over here we have the classic squash plate. Now, I'm not going to really get into how to mix the liquids or anything like that. Uh, if you go to my website, um, if, you, if you go to my um, uh, YouTube, I have several tutorials about how to do this stuff. So, you know, that stuff, if you want to just check out Liquid Light Labs YouTube. Um, and there's plenty of tutorials about how to actually mix the liquids and all of that. Um, and if you're interested also, I sell glass and dyes and uh, supplies to get started on this. One bit of um, full disclosure is this plate is, people sometimes ask me how long can you, uh, last, ha, lo how long can a plate last for? This has probably been sitting around for several months. Um, you know, I just haven't had a chance to clean anything today, but you throw a little bit of like alcohol in it and suddenly it breathes new life into a plate. And you know, suddenly, like you can see, we kind of opened it up and you know, all these extra things start going, uh, uh, these lobes and stuff start going out of it. And if we check it out on the screen, you can see what I'm talking about. You know, it was a little flat before, but the moment I added that alcohol in there, you can see that it broke it up and the bubbles got added to it. So moving on to the next uh, thing, we're gonna do what's known as a blow plate. So a blow plate is basically when you fill it up with some water, you fill up a dish with water. And again, if we check out the screen here, one of the things that I really love about analog projection, it actually picks up the three dimensionality of whatever you're putting in there. So those ripples that you're seeing from the water show up as well. That is not something that you would see uh, if on a digital capture system, which typically flattens stuff out. And I'm actually gonna try a bit of an experiment here 
I have these oils that I pre-mixed several years ago um, and haven't used them yet, so let's actually see what happens here. And what a blow plate does is you drop different oils uh, inside of the plate and in a second we'll grab a straw and we'll start blowing them around. Oh yeah, look at that. That's gnarly. That's the end. So I'll grab a straw. And again, you know, the idea of this today is just to do like a quick demonstration of stuff, not really to get into techniques. But I did want to show off some of the classic, you know, techniques that people used. And you just grab a straw and move them around. Let me add a little bit more dye in there just to make something look kind of cool. Anyway, and this is a typical way to do liquids as well and to blow them around. I also am going to put a fan on this so I can just kind of automate it and let it do its thing. And I'm going to turn on the other projector. And one of the things I also added to my projectors that really helps is I added dimmers. Uh, if you are going to do this, make sure that you put the dimmer uh, after the fan. You always, gotta, you always want to make sure that the fan is running. Don't ever shut off the fan on one of these things because it's going to kill it. Um, and as you can see on the screen, I can now mix the different liquids using pure light on the screen. And this is something that's really cool, that's something that you don't really get from typical uh, you know, digital or single source projectors, is you have real light on light mixing on the screen. And that's something that I really enjoy. Let me change that up a bit. And then, finally, what I want to sh show off here is something that my friend uh, Jocko from, uh, from Light Show Sphinx lent me, and this is a bubbler. And this is sort of a chamber that he made where you can push air through, you can push air using, and I'm using a, uh, and I'm using a, um, a, a, a basic uh, fish tank um, air bubbler. And I'm using some of these knobs to kind of change how much air I put in or out of it. All right, where's the other one? And I do have to say, this is actually something that he designed to be vertical on a slide projector. Um, but for our purposes here, and just to make it a little bit easier, I decided to go ahead and uh, lay it flat on this. And I know he's going to kill me because he's always told me that you put it in a slide projector. And I'm sorry, but um, uh, I think it still looks pretty cool. Now, one of the things that we talked about that other artists would do back in the day to overhead projectors is add color wheels. So if you want to check this out here, I got a color wheel. And again, I have tutorials about how to make this stuff on my website um, on Liquid Light Lab's uh, YouTube. But basically, I'm going to take this color wheel and put it in front of the lens here. And let's see, this would probably be a little bit easier if I was standing in front of it. Uh, sorry, I got to go around the front. <laughs> the wonders of analog. And this I'm also, uh, I now use flanges and hubs. This I actually connected with using BNC connectors, which is something uh, that a guy named Pete Snow invented uh, called the Pete wheel system that the guys in California used to use to be able to interchange their wheels with each other and make it a lot easier. And so now you can see that bubbler that was all white suddenly has this really cool uh, colors sweeping through it. Now I can like mix in, if I want to, my squish plate. 
And this is the squish plate that I was talking about that Elias Romero was the first person to start. And this is probably the most, you know, one of the more classic elements of the light sh of the old school uh, liquid light shows. And let's just add in my uh, my little spinning glow plate here. So here we got a bunch of analog uh, liquids going. Uh, one other thing that I also wanted to show off, actually two things. I'm going to put a color wheel as well on this thing, just so we can check it out and see what that looks like. And this one's a lot faster. This one's like a slow 20 watt uh, RPM one. This one goes up to like 100. And so this can really give some pretty cool strobe effects. Let's just say if you put like a dark piece on one of them, you can start making it strobe. So that's something to try out. And finally, because like I said, a lot of times the light shows weren't just uh, liquids, which do look really cool, and I'm actually very happy with, way, with the way this is looking right now. Something else that I, you can add to this stuff are some transparencies. So here, I'm going to throw on the stage. I've got this transparency here of this kind of ghost character. Actually, it's sort of a demon from an old uh, from an old Magic Lantern show. And while this is a static image, right, we're going to add a little bit of motion to it. We're going to take off this color wheel, and we're going to go ahead and put a warp wheel on it. This is one that we devised. We call this one a candela wheel. Typically, warp wheels have been vertical, we decided to put this one up, um, or the, typically, you know, color wheels are horizontal, we decided to make this one vertical and it spins like a tulip. And as you can see, while the image is static, we can go ahead and lift this up. I actually dropped this earlier and kind of broke it a little bit, but you can see as this gets in front of the projection, suddenly we take this kind of demonic character and kind of give it this like ghostly situation going on here. So it's kind of like, you know, and I love warp wheels and I love how it's not only just, you know, changing the image on the screen and causing images, but you have all this added ambient light around the room going. And so let's just go ahead and we'll, uh, you know, pop on some of the other stuff. And voila. All right. And... So just, all right, so thanks for watching. Uh, I'm gonna open this up to questions in a bit. These were pre-recorded just because it was, you know, the logistics of doing this made it a little bit easier to, to do it this way. But I am gonna be live now if you wanna ask me some questions. And uh, I wanna just make some corrections from a couple of things from my earlier talk. Uh, Elias Romero worked with jazz. I don't know why he said he worked with spoken word. Um, the big collaboration of Pablo, uh, light show in California was, was with San Francisco Lightworks. I forgot their names. Um, and then the, uh, the lady from Joshua Light Show, who I forgot to mention, was Allison Denny. Um, and also uh, Peter from um, uh, Liquid Light Orchestra. It wasn't just Peter, uh, but it was also uh, Neil Rice from Optikinetics. And um, Peter Wilson is his name. So I just want to get those names out there because I think it's important for the people in the art form to get the proper recognition. So uh, ask me anything.